Many oil-dependent nations are seeing their main source of profit drying up. So can the Middle East survive without oil? Right now, a barrel of crude oil costs 71.55 US dollars. The worldwide average is that. For comparison, the price of that same barrel of oil two years ago ranged from $1.9 to $1.40. Due to the increased demand and ongoing geopolitical tensions, it is projected to fluctuate considerably more in the upcoming weeks. Currently, these prices, even with oil at its highest level since 2014, it could seem like good news for oil-dependent places like the Middle East, but it would be grossly untrue, and the reasons are not what I anticipated. It appears that the world is not running out of oil, despite forecasts from the early and middle 2000s that led us to believe oil would significantly dry up and cause market crashes, especially not for the Middle East, at least not yet. They have an enormous amount of oil. Look no further than the world's verified oil reserves as of 2018. The Middle East has some of the largest uh, oil reserves, or also gas reserves, so uh, hydrocarbon fuel reserves in the world. Five of the top 10 positions are occupied by Middle Eastern countries. They account for 55% of the total known oil reserves in the globe. However, our usage patterns and the prices we're ready to pay are evolving as wealth transfers, alternate forms of energy and achieving climate targets become more affordable. Because the Middle East has so much oil, it will become less of a daily necessity and more of a luxury alternative, assuming one exists at all. Just take a look at this map of the area's oil reserves, and now it appears that the United States, the biggest oil producer in the world, will raise oil output in 2022 and 2023 directly affecting the Middle East. The Gulf Corporation Council nations, which are the countries indicated here, collectively have trillions of dollars in financial wealth. Exploiting these resources and then exporting them around the world is a major source of income generation for these countries. But if the region does not diversify its economy, that wealth could be gone as soon as 2034, according to a contentious 2020 report by the International Monetary Fund. What's worse, though, is that the IMF estimates global oil demand will peak by 2030 and decline from there, the Middle East being given. The International Monetary Fund stated that most Middle Eastern countries could run out of money in just five years. Despite the limited time available for diversification, these countries have been aware of their difficult status for some time. That is why Saudi Arabia's controversial crown prince and de facto ruler, Mohammed bin Salman, announced Saudi Vision 2030 in 2016. Some countries have already begun to shift their economies away from oil production. This strategy focused on three areas, society, the economy, and overall national development. The goal of Vision 2030 was to boost non-oil government revenue from $43.44 billion to $266.5 billion one of the most famous and ambitious initiatives. In order to invest in the private sector and provide employment for the 35 million people, 70% of whom are under 30, a number of programs would be established, as well as increasing the share of non-oil GDP from 16 to 50%. The intriguing aspect of this, though, is that Mohammed bin Salman previously launched a $2 trillion wealth fund that pledged to entirely diversify Saudi Arabia's economy and reduce its reliance on oil by 2020. Naturally, that didn't occur, but it will in 2021. Aramco, a state-owned and third-largest oil business in the world, sold $20 billion worth of stakes to an outside company to further restructure the oil domination shares of Aramco, worth $80 billion, were handed to the wealth fund this year. Even if there are less than 10 years left, it is still a far cry from the missions that were promised. The nation is significantly behind schedule. Similar circumstances can be found in Kuwait, where a heavy reliance on oil accounts for 95% of the government's revenue, 40% of the country's 136 billion GP, 101.5 billion barrels of proven reserves, and favorable geological placement that facilitates oil extraction. It is understandable why diversification has been challenging given how much simpler it would be to simply keep selling oil. But this is also true for Saudi Arabia. A new Kuwait Vision 2035 has been developed. However, it takes a somewhat different approach. Surprisingly, Kuwait wants to increase its investment in oil and gas extraction. By the year 2024, the Kuwait Petroleum Corporation hopes to have invested $500 billion to make hydrocarbon extraction safer and less destructive to the environment, deciding to acknowledge their need. While there is still time, Kuwait would want to enhance oil production and use the proceeds to develop its nation. These initiatives are also being funded by public-private sector partnerships. This video is sponsored by Zebec TriScreen.
Click the link in the description to get $25 off your purchase. This video you're watching right now was actually made using the Tri Screen. Boost your productivity by 44%. Works on almost any laptop. Extremely compact and portable. Remarkably lightweight. Set up in under 15 seconds. Hit the link to get $25 off your order. But let's continue. Oman is a tiny kingdom bordering by Yemen, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates. Unlike its neighbors, not an ASN, Oman won't have much time or a choice because its current oil and gas reserves will run out in the next 20 years. Just take a look at the percentage of exports that came from hydrocarbons. It's just astounding. For the past 30 years, 68 to 85 percent of the government's yieldly revenue has come from the export of hydrocarbons. Contrary to Kuwait or Monology, Saudi Arabia's neighbor harvesting is four times more expensive as a result. Raising taxes and cutting subsidies is perhaps the biggest way they can diversify, but it obviously involves making a lot of concessions. Giving the people more power entails asking more of them, and the government hasn't handled that well in the past. Oman only needs to look at their neighbor, the UAE, to understand how economies are actually diversifying. It is intentionally the most well-known and frequently visited country in the Middle East. They are the eighth largest oil producer in the world, which you almost overlook. While the entire nation still relies on the production of oil and gas for about 30% of its GDPs, Dubai's GDP is 95% independent of oil, despite having historically smaller oil reserves. Exploration for oil started in, in, in the early part of the previous century, around the early 1930s, commercially exploitable uh, volumes of oil. Dubai aimed to transform its emirates into a financial and IT tourism destination. A few hotels targeted at tourists were purchased in the 1990s, including one in Abu Dhabi. Due of its significant oil reserves much more recognizable, make Dubai. Utilize the money from the Lazar reserves to improve their infrastructure, which will increase tourism and help them establish themselves as a global center for high-end retail and finance. International brands and jobs were brought to the nation by the IT and financial hubs. A fantastic example of how to diversify an economy away from oil is the United Arab Emirates. And in order for other Malaysian Eastern nations to overcome their reliance on oil, they must be as transparent as they can be. And to attract foreign investment, embrace both the private sector and some aspects of Western society. Obviously, it's going to take some time and these visions might not be as attainable in the short term, but diversification does need to happen. If not, the riches will disappear just as fast as they appeared. And while all these countries are looking for lucrative income replacement, the richest of the rich are actually investing in other countries. I appreciate your interest and hope to see you in the next video.